Okay, we're recording. So the, the other idea with this is, you know, we try to record these sessions when we remember to do it. And that way we put them on YouTube so you can enjoy them later and go back and refer to them or share them with people who weren't able to come to the meetup in the first place. So that's the, that's the overview of what we're going to cover in the next six months um, in 15 to 20 minute uh, chunks. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a, a good idea of like how to use Hugo and use a basic static site generator. And of course, like the, the main uh, speakers uh, for the night are going to go into this stuff in a lot more detail. So you'll, you won't have to wait six months to get, to get a basic course on some of this stuff. Um, but uh, this, will, this will focus on one specific technology, um, the Hugo static site generator. So why did I want to cover Hugo for this basic course? There's a lot of static site generators out there. I thought about covering a couple different ones. Um, a very popular one is um, Gatsby, which is a, a React-based static site generator. Actually, Jamie's going to talk a little bit about Gatsby tonight, I believe. Um, and we, we have some different speakers that talk about it. Gatsby gets a lot of love these days. Um, Jekyll is another one that's pretty popular. That's a, a Ruby-based static site generator. Um, it's very easy to get up and going. It's, um, what it's, it's been pitched as one of the more simple static site generators. But I thought Hugo offered a lot of cool things that could give us a lot of content to, to dive into. So if you were to go to the feature page on the Hugo website, you'd see a list of features that look something similar to this. And th these are all definitely reasons why I think it's pretty interesting to talk about Hugo with you guys here today. So one of the things is Hugo supports multilingual sites, which is pretty cool. It, it's simple in the, the fact that it's a standard binary and it doesn't have a lot of dependencies that you have to install and rig up together. It just kind of works out of the box when you set it up. It has a concept of drafts, so you can have markdown files that are in your site that you don't want publicly displayed when you actually de deploy your site and serve it up to the public, which is cool. It helps working, you know, like a, a moderation workflow with different people. If you have many people working on the same site and you're working on content together, it helps for that kind of thing. It has pagination out of the box, so if you have long lists of information that go across many pages, it supports that. It supports the concept of redirects, which is pretty cool. So if you migrated from maybe like a WordPress site or something like that, and the URLs change slightly on your Hugo site, you have a concept of actually redirecting the old paths to the new paths. And that helps with things like SEO, um, and it gives you a powerful experience out of the box with Hugo. It has uh, an asset pipeline, which is pretty good, and that does what I talked about a second ago. So you can have a lot of like pre-processed style code in something like SAS or less, and Hugo can, can change that into regular CSS code, it can compress that code and make it a little bit more efficient for your server to run it. It can aggregate a bunch of different files into a single file. It can fingerprint it so it, it, it breaks the cache um, only when you change the files. So uh, you, your browser will get the cache version of the files unless you change it and then it'll give a new fingerprint and then it'll break that cache so you can see the new styles, which is pretty nice. It has the concept of live reloading for local development. So if you're building a site locally, you don't have to go and refresh your page every time. You can just make changes in your code and it actually goes out and refreshes your browser for you. It has taxonomies. So if you're tagging information and trying to organize your content in a meaningful way, you can tag things with a taxonomy and that will help you aggregate information based on how they're tagged. And it gives you a, you know, a really nice way to, to kind of create those content relationships. And it has a concept of content types. And that allows you, like, for instance, you might have different content on the site, like you might have events, which are different than news articles, which are different than blog posts, et cetera. So you can have these different types of content, which they all um, follow their own kind of structured way of doing things. So like an event, for instance, might have a title field, a date field, and a picture and maybe a short description, but your blog post might be a lot different than that. So you kind of have this concept where you can build these specific types of content, which is really nice. And then they have the idea of short codes, which uh, if you're familiar with things like WordPress, they, they have that as well. So it's short little snippets that actually allow you to pull in larger chunks of uh, HTML. So for instance, if I was writing in a markdown file and I didn't want to intersperse like a lot of HTML structure into it, I could add a, sh a short code to it and that would, that would go out on the build and it would pull in that HTML structure and it actually give me that structured component in my markdown file. So those are all great things. Um, I think they're definitely worth talking about, but they're not the main reason why I want to talk about Hugo. Uh, so the main thing I want to talk about is the fast build times. So I feel like this concept doesn't get a lot of love, or it does, a lot of people do care about it, but I feel like um, some people, it, this is kind of lost on and they don't understand why this is important. And the reason it's important to me, there's, there's a couple of different reasons. So 
One is at scale, if you're trying to build a site with more than dozens of pages, maybe you're talking hundreds or thousands of pages, having a site that can compile pretty fast is important uh, because it, it allows you to handle many of those things without having a really slow, lethargic uh, build process. Another thing that I think is pretty interesting um, that fast, fast build times help with is the concept of uh, content management. And a lot of systems do this in different ways. Uh, I'm interested a lot in the Netlify CMS. So this is an open source project that Netlify put out. It's uh, basically a React app that sits in the front of your Jamstack site. And what it does is it allows you to have a non-technical content editor go through and edit fields, just kind of like they would do on a WordPress site. So you would see a, a live preview on one pane and then fields on another pane. And you could like edit a title field, a description, you can uh, manage media there, you can add new images. You can tag things and you can see the live preview on the, uh, the right hand side of your editor. What's cool is when you go to save it, if you have something that compiles fast, what it does is it actually, it will do a commit uh, or, or a pull request to your code base. So if you're hosting on GitHub, for instance, or GitHub, uh, it will do a commit from that React app over to your code base. And then that will kick off a continuous integration process, which would build your site again and then display that change on your live site. So if you have something that compiles really fast like Hugo, you can have this real-time experience where you go in and a non-technical person's editing a site, they save it in seconds, ideally instead of minutes later, they have that live version on their site. So that makes Hugo really powerful and that's a, a big reason why I'm interested in, in this technology and hopefully uh, it will empower you to, to have that kind of real-time experience as well. So the first thing you need to do if you want to use Hugo is you have to install it. Luckily, that's generally pretty easy. So uh, if you're on Mac, if you use something called Homebrew, which is a, a package manager, you can just brew install Hugo. Uh, I don't know much about Windows. Um, they have a package manager as well that uh, apparently uh, works. And then if you're on a newer version of Ubuntu, they have a snap uh, concept. So you can just snap install Hugo that way. And from there, you should pre pretty much up and running. So it essentially will give you a command line tool that allows you to run certain commands to build out the structure of your site and add content to it and serve it up on a, a basic local server. And from there, you can actually just go and design a site in a pretty quick way using the Jamstack architecture. So what would that process look like? Essentially, you would use the command line tool, which starts with the prefix of Hugo. And you would just say Hugo new and then the new site and then the name of your website. So in this case, we're going to just call it Jamstack Boston. Uh, I'm on the, the, the desktop folder on my home. That's not part of the command. So I'm in the desktop on my computer. I run the Hugo command and then new Jamstack Boston website. And essentially that will create a folder structure that has all the basic files that you need to start a Hugo based Jamstack website. If you want more information that getting started quick start guide on the hugo.io site will help you there as well. So this is what the folder structure looks like essentially. So once you run that Hugo new site command, you're going to get these basic, like what is it? Six folders in one file. And essentially what's happening here is this is the, the basic architecture of your Hugo based website. And these each do a specific thing. So the archetypes folder is actually, um, it's like a, a template uh, for new content. So for instance, you could have different templates in there or you could have one general template. And every time you create new content, it will be given the structure that is set in your archetype. So for instance, say back to the event example, say I have a content type called events and I want every event to have a title, a date field, a, an image and a description. I can set my archetype to have those fields in it. So when every time I say Hugo new and I create an event, it will, it will have that structure out of the box and you don't have to go and manually edit a link file and put that information into it. So archetypes are pretty cool. The config.toml file, this is the main site configuration file. Uh, if you're not familiar with toml, it's similar to YAML if you're more familiar with YAML. And essentially it's just key value pairs that set up some of the basic uh, information for your site. So things like what URL is the site going to be hosted at? What's the site name and, and different uh, metadata like that about your site? You can actually convert this to a YAML file. You don't have to use Toml. This is just what comes out of the box. So you can, you can just convert this um, structure. The content folder, that is essentially um, where you put your markdown file. So the whole idea with a lot of these site generators is you separate the actual content from the layout. So the layout is your, your template files, your HTML files that has the structure of the elements and things in your site. 
and the content is the different, the actual different pages of the site. So for instance, it, like blog post one would be the title. And then on the layout side, it'd be like, okay, that title is inside of an H1 tag. It's a header one tag. And that's kind of where the separation of things go. And inside your content folder, you can have the different content types. So if you have blogs, for instance, it would be content and then the subfolder would be blog. If you have events, it'd be, you know, content subfolder event and, and so on and so forth. And you can create um, structured data in that way. Your data folder is for bigger sets of data. So you can drop like large JSON files or YAML files in there. And then essentially you can access this like you would access other content throughout the site. So as you're plating in your, uh, in your templates, you can go and you can actually access those variables by using the dot notation that Hugo has out of, out of the box. And you can access different uh, values from those files. Your layouts, again, is your HTML structure. And this has a very specific way of uh, it, it's hierarchy and how it inherits different templates and what templates are used for what we're going to go into that more deeply next month on the templating section. So just for now you have to understand that's where the templates are going to go. Your static folder is where your static assets live. So that's things like CSS and JavaScript and images and, and that type of thing. Um, and that gets built into your site automatically. There's also another concept of an asset folder. Um, we're not going to get into that now. We'll get into that when we go into the asset pipelines in a future course. Then the last one that we have here is the themes folder. And essentially you can download pre-existing themes if you don't want to build one from scratch. So you can go to, I think it's like hugothemes.io or something like that. And you can um, download a pre-existing theme and that'll give you a bunch of style, give you some templates, and you can basically have a working site out of the box if you download someone else's theme. You can also build a theme from scratch and then that would be reusable and shareable with other people to download on their sites if you wanted to, sh to share it on like a public site like GitHub or something like that. Now, the theme structure follows a similar structure to the main level site, and that's part of the whole template overriding. So things that you put in your theme can be overridden in lower sections on your, uh, your base section of your uh, site. Now, okay, so you started your site, you have those basic files out of the box, and you want to get started. So the command here, is I, I change directories into my Jamstack Boston folder, so that's the folder we're in. And then I run the Hugo command and I run the server command. Essentially what that does is it starts up a lightweight web server and it gives us a URL where we can go look at our new website in the browser. So, you know, you start that, it gives you a URL, click on the URL, look at your browser and you'll see something that probably looks like this. And the reason is Hugo doesn't give you content or layouts or anything out of the box. It doesn't pretend to know what you want to do with it. So this might be confusing for someone who's new to the, to the system. They, they start up the server, they're expecting a site or some default content, like a lot of, uh, systems do and you're going to see this this blank site. So it is working. It, it's just uh, you haven't done anything yet to make it to make it work. So if you look at your command line where you actually ran the Hugo server command, you'll probably see uh, an error that looks similar to this, that there's no layout for the HTML for home. So you have to create a template file that matches lookup rules for this combination. So what, what, what are those, what are those, you can um, go look at the Hugo site uh, to find out how things inherit from each other and what type of content looks for what type of template. But I'll just give you a fast and easy rule to get something up on your website so you can go home and try this today and, and get something working. So essentially what you want to do is you want to go through and in your layouts folder, um, just a, the quick and easy is if you have content in, in, in uh, underscore index dot markdown file, it's going to look to a few templates to try to render. The first template it's going to look to is an index.html file. If it can't find that, it's going to look to a list.html file. And the reason that is, is there's, there's two main concepts of, well, there's more than two, but the, the basic building blocks of Hugo is there's list pages and single pages. And the way you, to understand this is, okay, let's think about blogs for an instance, right? There are individual blog posts. Those are single pages. So they would look to a template single.html, all those individual posts. But then there's the blog page that aggregates all those different posts and it's a list of all the blog posts. That looks to the list.html template. And talking about basic pages on a website, uh, so like for instance, the index.markdown file that we would create, that is interpreted as a list page. And then other basic pages like about us or like a contact page is interpreted as a single page. And that's just how Hugo kind of handles these things out of the box. And so if you add this list.html file and you put the word hello into that file, it will appear in your browser as hello. And so that's 
that's basically, I was, I don't know how I'm doing on time here. I don't want to use up too much time for Jamie, but I was, I could go over this on the command line and just show you a quick live demo if that's helpful. What, how long have I been talking? Oh, okay. Let's just, we'll, we'll call it then. Um, so does anyone have any questions on any of that? I could, I could take a minute and just like run through it quick or, or did people kind of generally understand how that worked? Yeah. You don't really have, so in order to sell, I do have Go on my machine, but I'm pretty sure, cause I, I put Go on it for a different project after I had been using Hugo for a while. So I, I, it's been a while since I actually installed it. I'm pretty sure I just either app get or, or snap installed Hugo and it, it pretty much just works out of the box with that. Yeah. You don't, so the, so it does use, um, I, I believe it's kind of like a Go based templating syntax out of the box, although you can change that to be your own, um, your own templating uh, wrapper if you want. Um, but it, does, it might help for like things like, you know, if you're looping um, uh, over like an array or something like that, like knowing some syntax might help, but you don't really need to know Go at all. It's, it, it's really like if you want to get back to the roots of writing HTML and CSS and things like that, um, it's really nice because you can just start templating those things once you understand a little bit about how Hugo actually wants to create um, your site. But yeah, you don't really need to know Go at all because I don't, I don't know much about Go. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uses this stack. Um, so I, one of the, the probably, and actually Divya can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, one of the, the better known examples I think is Smashing Magazine. Is that on a Hugo based? Oh, there, okay. Yeah. 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 So just for the recording. So yeah, I, I believe uh, Smash Magazine moved from WordPress to Hugo. Um, if you go to the Hugo website, they actually have like a small like case study section with a bunch of websites that are using it. So you can kind of see what, what people are using that stack. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so we're gonna switch over now and uh, to our featured speaker, Jamie Barton, give him a big round of applause.